the wood that we have here in Canada, and we have some incredible wood like Sitka spruce, and which is unmatched. But there are some wood in, for example, as I go into the Swiss Alps, I mean, way, way up in the mountains, you know, to unbelievable heights where this wood grows. Uh, there's Switzerland, Austria, uh, and I have to go to all of them because when I go, I can only find small quantities of it. Unlike Sitka spruce, you can find one Sitka log will yield 2,000 guitar tops. A Swiss spruce or Austri Austrian or even Italian, they, it's very small amount. So you have to, I'll go there and I'll buy two, three hundred guitar tops and that's the best I can get from that guy. Then I have to go to the other guy and then each one has a different tonal property, which is really important. No wood is purchased without first being examined by a family member, by a larvae. Whether it's uh, John, Matthew, or me, uh, you know, I take care of more of the exotic wood because I'm the one that travels. I don't have a new wife at home that needs me every day, uh, you know, so I can go for weeks on end. And I travel probably about four months a year, I'm out searching for wood. Uh, in different location. Like now I just came back from Spain to select ebony. And I was only able to get 2,000 fingerboards, so I'm going back in November, and they will have a lot more, and then I'll choose an, an additional 5,000 fingerboards. So that's what you have to do, is you have to continuously search. You know, I search, I'm always searching, I'm searching now. And so that if all of a sudden one wood gets cut off, I simply just go to, the, to, to a new source of another kind of wood. And I know how to work with that wood because I experiment with it. You wouldn't just buy a truckload and start building guitars tomorrow without doing an experiment. You have to plan ahead. I plan ahead.